Hello and welcome back to some more BitBurners. So in the last video I showed you guys how to create a script that can automatically increase your profits uh, by automatically hiring some of the advertising and as you can see here um, my profit amount jumped to around 495s. I, I, I don't even know what that S stands for. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what happens when you go public. Uh, and then also um, cover some of the changes that I'm going to make so that we can fully automate the creation of the divisions. Um, so before we get started, I actually want to point out uh, some something that I discovered when I was, um, I guess, playing around with the game. Uh, so the first is um, the capacity research. Um, and as you can see here, we can now produce more than three items. I thought there was no way to actually produce more, more than three products. Uh, but turns out there is. So you can actually increase it up to five. And how you do this is by... Uh, going to this research tab, expanding this window, and then looking for upgrade fulcrum. And then below the upgrade fulcrum, you have uh, these two upgrades. So upgrade upgrade capacity 1 and upgrade capacity 2. So if you purchase up, upgrade capacity 1, it's going to uh, increase your uh, number of products to 4. And if you purchase the upgrade capacity number 2, you can develop up to 5 products, which is really cool. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go public. Uh, so going public in this game is basically how you get paid, uh, your profits from your corporations. So I'm just going to click on this and then, uh, it's going to ask you to issue the amount of shares you want to, um, I guess, allocate for your IPO. So initial public offering, and then your, uh, corporation currently costs this much. So your share will cost this much. Um, since I don't really want to, I guess, offload um, some of the shares of this, uh, this company to a whole lot of people, I'm only going to assign one share uh, so that we, we can buy it back instantly. Uh, so I'm going to go public and uh, there you go. So now we got this amount of money, but it doesn't really matter because we can produce way more than that. Uh, you can actually buy back some of the shares here. So as you can see that we currently have one outstanding stock shares So we can just buy that back um, uh, And also you buy it back with your own money So the reason why this is disabled is because I don't have enough money So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pe be paying myself for uh, in a form of dividends and you can pay all your investors via this this button here uh, called issue dividends. So basically you can see dividends as um, basically just a portion of the company's profit. So for example, if you set this as uh, 20, uh, you're basically um, allocating 20% of your company's uh, funds or uh, your company's um, profit um, to, to yourself. So to yourself and also to your initial investors. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allocate 50% of that to myself. And then you can see the money streams in very, very quickly. So uh, basically, I'm, I'm allocating half of this. So half of this is going to me um, and also my other investors, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy back the this outstanding share because I already have enough money. Um, and then, yeah, and then uh, I fully own all the stock share, so none of the investors can, uh, you know, take that money, except for the initial investments. Um, so there's other ex extra buttons here, so sell shares and issue new shares. Uh, so sell shares basically uh, sells your company stocks, uh, so that you can uh, put some money in your bank. Um, so it, the money is going to you. So this number here is going to your own bank account. Uh, this issue new shares is basically just um, issuing some of the shares uh, to uh, the public. And then also, um, and the money that, that comes from this is uh, going to your corporation funds. Uh, we don't really need to do any of these because we were pretty much well off. Uh, from the profit amount. Um, in fact, at this point of the game, you're probably just going to focus on um, purchasing some of the the upgrades from the factions um, because you can do that now. You have a whole lot of money. 
and also you can you can focus on bribing some of the factions as well uh, so that you can gain some reputation points uh, in fact I'm just gonna um, spend a few minutes just purchasing some some augmentations so that um, you know so that I, I progress through the game all right so I purchased some of the augmentations and um, I should probably install all of them but I'm probably just gonna leave it uh, mainly because I want to get the um, achievement um, for the um, installing 100 augmentations at once so I'm just gonna leave it there um, but in theory I can actually finish the game uh, by installing the augmentations and then just waiting it out uh, but th that's not what we're going to do because I feel like we still have quite a bit to do with the divisions. Um, with the first being able to automate the creation of this division. And then um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, another script that can automatically expand to new divisions. Um, I know that I mentioned um, in my last two, three videos that um, I guess divisions can't be automated mainly because it's going to use up uh, quite a bit of your funds. Um, I still believe that, um, you know, you, you don't want to fully offload um, all the responsibilities of managing the division or your corporation to some sort of script because they might misuse it. But since the the point of the entire series is to automate everything uh, in this game, I might as well try to attempt doing that. Um, but I'm pretty much well off on the money, so um, I'm not really too worried about um, you know, the, you know, messing up. And if I do mess up, I could always just turn off the script and then, then, then just try to recover from that. All right. So to automate the division creation process, um, there needs to be some stuff that, um, I guess, some changes that need to be made to our current scripts. And the reason for this is because when I initially created the scripts, um, I made the, the assumption that I was gonna run it manually. Um, so if we go to our script editor and then uh, go through some of the changes that's necessary. So the first change uh, that I created is uh, basically related to the um, the maximum products. So if we go back to the corporation tab here, I discovered that you can actually develop more than three products. So as you can see, I, I developed uh, five products here. Um, and the, the way you do that is by purchasing a research called capacity. Uh, so if you, we can get there by clicking on that research tab, uh, expanding this window, um, clicking on this upgrade fulcrum, and then up, uh, purchasing these upgrade capacity one and two. So you, you need to purchase these three upgrades you, so that you can develop more than three products. So we modified our product manager to uh, support this here uh, from the get max products function here. Um, the second change that I made is um, the way that the product name is um, generated. Uh, so whenever we develop products, we we used to just base it off the length of the current number of products. It threw an error where it, it complained about the product already existing. Uh, just to make sure that every single product that product that we create is um, you know fully unique uh, basically what I did was I just assigned the um, the suffix to the unix timestamp of uh, when the product was created and this will guarantee that whatever you create is always uh, unique and then the the third change that I, I made was um, since we dynamically determined the the products here um, I modified the, um, the the functions that relies on the max products constant. So uh, I modified the should develop product to take in the max products argument. And then I modified the develop products um, to take in that max products argument as well. Uh, so those are some of the changes that I created. Um, if you uh, want to copy some of the changes, just go into my GitHub page and then it's all going to make sense. Uh, the second change that I made is related to the corporation recruiter. Uh, when you create a new division, uh, what my plan is, is to allocate all my employees to the research and development job. And the reason for this is because every single division has their own set of research points. And uh, um, since all the employees will be assigned to the research uh, job, then we can generate the research, research points a lot faster. 
Um, so what I did was I created a flag here uh, that basically symbolizes a uh, whether or not we want to allocate every single employee to the research job. So how we use this is by just uh, running the corporation recruiter um, normally and then passing in the division name, the city name, and then the required employees. So let's say 200. Um, and then just using the flag like this dash dash research and this will allow that boolean flag uh, to be set to true and then if it's true then we want to set the employee distribution to just assign all the employees to the research and development job like so and then the third and final thing that we uh, need to set up is I guess the corporation researcher so this is an entirely new script uh, that I haven't covered in my previous videos um, so how this works is that it's just gonna basically just research all the essential research topics or subjects that you need for the division so things like the market TA the capacity so all of those things um, and then it just waits until the division has enough research points and then researches them in the in a in a specific order so uh, if we go through this uh, the script here uh, starting from the the top here uh, the first thing we do is we we request for the division name uh, and the reason for this is again every single division has their own set of research and then we create a map here that maps the actual string name so the research name to some sort of property so that we can use it in our scripts a lot easier I, I still don't know why the corporation api doesn't have some sort of constant that symbolizes all the researches but oh well we have to map it out um if i was to do this properly i would create some sort of corporation facade script that uh, basically just contains all of the constants that we need so all the research names all the job names all the the sectors and whatnot but um again since uh, some people like to copy and paste my code straight away then i need to implement my code so that it's sta it's a standalone script that you can just copy and paste across your game and then down here is the research order so basically it's just it just symbolizes the order that every single one of these research has to be um i guess purchased and uh they they all depend on each other so for example you can't really purchase market ta1 without the lab you can't purchase market ta2 without market ta1 so that that's why it's uh like this um and then uh, we extract the corporation api by using ns.corporation and then moving down to the main loop uh, basically what we do is we just want to grab all the research that we have left so basically uh, looking at the research order and then filtering out the ones that hasn't been researched yet and then if the there's nothing to research then we just want to exit out of this script mainly because we already researched everything we need um, for that division uh, but if there is still some research that needs to be done then we grab the number of current points which is just extracting it from the division object um, and then after that we then uh, grab the pending research so the one at the top of the array um, and then uh, we grab the research cost for that pending research um, and then if the current amount of points that we have for the division is bigger or equal than the research cost then we just want to research that um, otherwise we just wait uh, every second so yeah so that's about it so all of these scripts will be used on our corporation manager um, so there's going to be some planning required for this mainly because i just want to be extra careful not to um, i guess you know use up use up all the corporation funds when i automate creating the division uh but uh, i'm gonna be spending some time doing uh doing some planning so um i guess i'll see you guys in uh, the next video